cornerstone.
God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are thankful that you are and your Son is our cornerstone. And upon him is all hope built. All other ground is sinking sand. This morning as we come to celebrate and to worship you, we ask that we take all distractions and everything out of our way and that we put in a focus totally on you and your son Jesus Christ, lifted up, crucified. Now watch over us, guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to welcome you today. You're visiting. We're glad you're here. We're just glad everybody is here with us this morning. Isn't it a wonderful day to be here? And again, we just, yes, it is. It's a wonderful day to be alive. Praise the Lord. It certainly is. There's things I want to call attention, one in particular, but we're going to call many things. Do remember, next Sunday evening, that is the 11th of February, and this is very important. I could say, like the preacher said, my home church, mark it and circle it. There will be a call business meeting here in the church. We'll have it here in the sanctuary. And to hear a recommendation from the building committee concerning the adoption of proposed expansion and renovation plans. We had a meeting earlier last month concerning, and if you have concerns, I ask that you address the committee with that. But please make an effort to be here. We'll be putting it out on the phone tree later this week. So make this a matter of prayer. Also, an urgent thing also we do have, we didn't get any information until late, the Region 3 missions meetings. Some of you have gone to those meetings and know they're good meetings. They're going to have it. It's not going to be far this time at the Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Clinton. And it's on Thursday, February the 15th. There's a sign-up sheet in the rear hall, and I need to have an indication by the 8th. Yeah. Amen. Well, that is one of Miss Becky just said that the dresses that was put to me read a thank you note last Sunday or so. Uh, they're going to have a clip at this thing. They do all sorts of missions things all the way, and it's just an exciting thing. I'm always blessed. And so it's, they're going to provide a meal. We'll be at 6 o'clock. We'll probably leave here somewhere around 5.15 to 5.30, give or take a few minutes, and I'll be letting you know the time next week. But if you, if you haven't been to one, you're missing something. Some of you go to those things and know it's a good meeting. So we'll have to sign up sheet out there, and by all means, make a special effort to come. You will be blessed by the work that North Carolina Baptists do and the churches do and the areas do. And I think it's a wonderful thing. So to remember that. Also, our youth will be doing a fundraiser after church on Sunday, March the 18th. And to pre-order barbecue, call or text 919880233. Also, another special thing as well. We're collecting what? Bears. Miss Cindy may have some more to say about it. And we're having a special law enforcement Sunday. We've never done a law enforcement appreciation Sunday. And it will be the 25th. We've sent letters to the Sampson County Sheriff's Department the North Carolina Highway Patrol, Sampson County Regional District, and the Clinton City Police Department. And so we're looking forward to a group coming. We're going to have a covered dish luncheon. So please bring some food that day on the 25th and bring a little more, you know, because we've got some law enforcement folks to feed as well. And so, in other words, I just think that we need to, I just thought I'd let you know that, that we need to do that. So be in prayer for that. Also, we'll be collecting bears up to that Sunday. So if you're not prepared, come and do it. They've got bears. They will accept other animals, but I think they mainly emphasize bears, but they will accept a dog or something else like that as well. But this is a wonderful ministry, so please note that. Also note there will be no children and youth activities this evening as well. And that we will have family night supper this week with adult one serving. So the Lord is good in the things we're doing and the things that we're having to look forward to. And so now we're going to sing our first hymn, Love Lifted Me. Okay. Come on. 
Come on, 546. Y'all you know you're going to have choir practice around here. <laughs> Everybody know that. Okay. lifted you this morning. Amen and amen. This time we want you to greet your friends and neighbors and show them some love too. Hallelujah. Everybody, I'm up this way now. Y'all got to come on. Hello? Miss Cindy's up here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to talk this morning about dreams. Do y'all have dreams at night? Sometimes you wake up with a real, real scary dream, and you're scared, and you run to mom and daddy, and they make it feel all right. Sometimes you wake up with a happy. Sometimes you wake up with a happy dream that you're smiling and all. You know what? We got one person that doesn't have a dream, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not a dream. He is real. And where do we have him at? Where did Miss Cindy tell you he has him at? In our heart. We keep him in our heart, don't we? We ask him to come in our heart to stay in our heart, don't we? Don't we? So let's remember when we dream and all, that we dream about Jesus, that he stays in our heart. When we ask him to come in our heart, he stays in our heart. He never leaves our heart, that he's not a dream. He's real, okay? All right, let's have our prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for today that you've given us this. Lord, be with us as we go throughout the day. Dear Lord, be with Mr. Stricker. And dear Lord, I had a heavy burden this morning. I went to several Sunday school classes and asked for prayer. Dear Lord, be with me this week as I try to witness and all. And keep us safe. And be with Brooklyn and Hannah. They're not here this morning, but they're sick. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
We'll continue our worship service this morning by singing hymn number 547, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. So I'm thanking you, Father, for the many, many blessings that you give us every day. Lord, in this morning we come to you as we have an opportunity to share back. We ask you that you be with each person, Lord, and may they give back accordingly. And may each of these gifts be used for your word for these things that I pray. Amen. Thank you. In the garden, I come to the garden alone. 
And he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own. And the voice I hear as I tell there, none other has ever known. Thank you for sharing that. This time, Miss Zeta Pope is going to come and share our scripture. Good morning. Good morning, Zeta. If you would, please stand for the reading of God's word. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. May God richly bless the reading word. You may be seated. We come this morning in prayer, knowing those a special need. I said there's quite a list. They continue to remember Brother Billy Vaughn uh, and remember that family as he is having to go through suffering ordeal of cancer. So continue to remember him. Remember the family of Addie Phillips, that was Cheryl's last aunt, so uh, passed away this week. So please remember that family, and also uh, Deanne's grandmother. We need to remember her as well. Are the others? Carolyn and Wayne Johnson. Okay. Okay. Our Jackson. Brenda Peterson. Justin Parker. Who? Elsie Jackson and Rebecca Beasley. Lynn Strickland. Also, Earl mentioned Donald Smith this morning, so we do need to remember, remember Donald. He, I believe, is going to have triple bypass surgery, so, think, so please remember him. Some of you know him. Others? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for allowing us to come to church to worship you this morning. Please help the sick people get well. You know their names, and you know their needs. And please be with the pastor as he delivers the message this morning. Amen.
not often I get to sit at this piano. And so since I'm here, I might share something else with you. If I mess up, just praise the Lord. There was a lady at a radio station, and they didn't know what they were doing. They bought it in Williamson. And she says, I'm up here making mistakes for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know theologically how well that works out. It said she was making mistakes. So if I make mistakes, just take a thing. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair, God's tricked child, and pardon from your sin. His erring child is reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole if stretched from sky to sky O oh, love of God how rich, how pure, how measureless and free. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angel song. O oh, love of God, how rich, how pure. How measureless and free It shall forevermore endure The saints and angels' song Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we talk about the love of God, the deep, fervent love of God, just give me the words to say, the words that we just mentioned in this song, the words the choir talking about the shepherd of love. Lord, just be with us today, and whatever's going to make it, just touch hearts and touch souls in a special way in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. We live in a society today where there's not a lot of depth to people's love, a lot of depth to their being. You know, society goes into the shallowness of plains. People are seeking their own good and their own self and having a good time. And this shallowness leads to self-centeredness. This shallowness leads to ugliness. And you know, I see a lot of times there's no such thing as common courtesy. People are rude, people are in your face. You know, this is promoted through the entertainment industry and the things that are done. Through social media, people can hide behind things such as Facebook and Twitter and all these different devices, and some I don't even know about today. They keep adding them. But friends, today, a lot of this is ugly and hurtful remarks. You know, we know the world is caught up with this. We know the world's not going to get any better until the Lord comes again. It's going to get worse and worse until Jesus defeats Satan in that final days. And the king be king of kings and lord of lords. Yes, we know the world is shallow. But what about the love that we have in the church? Where is our love? You know, we used to sing that song in my home church, and we've sung it a lot here. It's a little simple sounding song. I pick it out from Miss Betts and all of them every time then. It's I love thee, I love thee. I love thee, my Lord. 
I love, do you know it well? I love thee, my Savior. I love thee, my God. I love thee, I love thee. And that thou dost know. And what's that last thing say for you folks who've sung it many a time? But how much I love thee is what? My actions will show. Friends, today, that's where we are as Christians. That's where we are as a church. You know, we need to have a difference. The secular world is caught up with all of this shallowness. But we do not need to do it. We see churches that are too much at odds with each other. We see churches that attack each other's character. We see others that put attitudes against each other. Where we really need to reflect Jesus Christ, Him lifted up, Him crucified. Next Sunday evening, we're going to have a very important meeting. I cannot emphasize more the importance. It will affect the future of this church. It will be a call business meeting. Our building committee has worked hard. They've drawn plans. They've visited other sites. They've looked at two or three alternatives. But one thing I'm going to say on behalf of this committee is they have had a sense of unity the whole time. They have been together. Now, we're not going to always agree on all the particulars, and that's fine. In other words, and we're not going to agree on the different approaches to different ministries and procedures and all. That's fine. But one thing that must come out of all of this is we need to learn to love. We need to learn to respect one another. And this comes from your pastor. We need to learn and respect one another. You know, we have a bright future. I've done a lot of history. Brother Ron and I love to talk about that sometimes. I know Ms. Hazel and some of us have talked about the history in the church. And I go back to the first pastor of this church. One of the counts said he's a temporary pastor, but he's made an impression in my life. I didn't know the man. He predated me many, many, many years. Some of you might not think not, but he didn't. I didn't know him. Somebody asked me that first Sunday, that I know that man. You know, it was up there, showed the preacher when he was doing the sentence. He said, well, Mr. Strickland, did you know him? No, Mr. Strickland. He was a little bit before Mr. Strickland's time. But he wrote in that material that I got from the biblical recording, it's a gem. And I quote it, and you'll probably hear it again before it's over. Probably if we ever dedicate a building here, well, I'll put it again. He said this, The prospects are bright. We have the best people in the community with us. Then he says, and we will build soon. Friends, the prospects are still bright. We still have the best people in the community. But what we need to do is to find ways that we can pull and work together under love and to find common grounds. In other words, and we need to make this a matter of prayer. That's what we need to do in anything. We need to pray about it. But you know, we talk about the deepness of love. How deep is your love? You know, the deepest love comes through Jesus Christ. You know, Apostle Paul put this in, in uh, his letter to Ephesians. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love and may be a comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I just sung that song about the love of God. Could we within the ocean fill and were the sky of parchment made? With every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole if stretched from sky to sky. Friends, we've got a wonderful, loving God, and it's indescribable. But today, we need to carry that love in our lives. You know, and how does love? In 1 Peter, and Zeta did such a good job with that, it says this, Seeing that you have purified your souls, by obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love, to love, she love one another with a pure heart fervently. And the one that she read, which is really puts it actually, I think, better, it says this, Now that you have purified your hearts, yourself, by obeying the truth, that you sincerely love one another, and love one another how deeply, in other words, with the depth of love that we should love, the depth, how deep is that love? So let's look this morning at how that we can love. The first thing we've got to do is it must come from the heart. We've got to get our hearts right with the Lord. You know, the Old Testament says we've got to love God, love God with all our heart, our soul, our being. 
You know, last week we said we need to have a burning desire to know the Lord, to know Him lifted up, to know Him as Paul says, to know Christ and to know Him crucified. To know that Jesus Christ is there. You know, the world today makes money their God. They make power their God. They make control their God. In other words, this is what the world does and we do not need to do it. Friends, today in Sunday school we learned with little children that little simple verse in 1 John. God is love. Friends, today we've got to love God and to realize that He loved us enough to send His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. You know that wonderful verse, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friends, today we've got to have a wonderful relationship with God. You know, the other night in business meeting. And sometimes the Lord speaks to me. I reminded myself of my old dear daddy. My daddy's one said what was on his mind. I'm not like him. If I would, I wouldn't have been here 26 years. If he didn't like something, he'd tell you right flat out. Well, I don't know. We were counting the ballots on the issue. I've got which issue was on. And I says, oh, by the way, if you all were to die tonight, where would you go? Would you go to the Lord or would you go to hell? Where would you spend it? Do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know him as your Savior? And I had some people had kind of a, one of that sharp enough head like, oh, you're not talking about me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But somebody evidently was there to hear that. I don't know who it was. But that speaks to somebody. And I do say this, that church membership does not save anybody. I ask people there, well, I'm a church member, so and so. I've been there 30 years. I've been there 40 years. Might not attend it, but one year. But they've been there 30, 40 years. But friends, today it's our relationship with Jesus Christ. And my prayer for all of us. And I got thinking about things. I set it off a cuff, but I had a re- some of the Lord had a reason for that to be brought out on that meeting. And that we need to get our lives right with Jesus. We need to come to Him and confess our sins. If you don't know Him this morning, there's no better time than confessing the sins all. In other words, to do it. You know, to realize that you're wrong and it's going to lead you to spend eternity in hell. And to realize there is a new way to turn around. As the old song says, turn around, God is calling. He's calling you from a life of wasted years. Yes, we need to let him be a Lord of our lives. We let him need to be Lord of every inch of our lives, from the depth of our hearts to the top of our soul, as old Roberts used to say, from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet, that we need to let him be Lord and to be sure. You know, even we as Christians put self on the side. We want to carry our point. We want to do. Look at what we are going to do. And we need to realize that we need to turn our wills, our actions, over to Jesus Christ to let Him be Lord of our lives. In other words, Jesus needs to be in charge. He needs to be in charge of our church. He needs to be in charge of our homes. We need to do it through the Holy Spirit. You know, we sing that song at Revival, and sometimes I don't think we put a whole lot of things. We just go, blah, 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 blah. I quote a lot of hymns. Some people probably get tired of it, but sometimes I don't think we pay too much mind to them. We just kind of mindlessly sing them off. What do we say? Send a great revival in my soul. Send a great revival in my soul. What does that next verse say? Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. He says, sing a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. We sung that song. Let's go sing another one now. We done done with that one now. What did that song say? Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. My, my, my. Not to sound Pentecostal, but my, my, if we had the Holy Spirit controlling us and we were tied by the Holy Spirit of God, you wouldn't see, you know what happened in this church. Friends, today we could do it. I know Brother Billy Vaughn rested. Brother Billy's not doing well. Y'all pray for him. Brother Billy said he just loved to see people and just have the Holy Spirit of God to fill each person around when they worship. And my prayer is that we all will be filled with the depth of the Holy Spirit of God. Before we can love, we got to be filled. On fire for the Lord and to love Him with all our hearts. Friends, today, is Jesus Christ over all? Is He over every organization, every meeting, every activity, every procedure, every program in this church? Jesus has to be over everything. In other words, we need to get our lives right to see that Jesus Christ is in Christ and to live our lives controlled by the Holy Spirit. And when we can do that, we can turn our lives to worship the Lord, to lift Him up. We've got to center on the Lord. In other words, when we come and worship, we look at the songs, we look at the message, we look at the scripture. 
We sing Jesus, 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 sweetest song I know. She fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Friends, today we need to get our hearts on tune with the Lord. We've got to do this. We can do all the things we can in this church, just like the church at Ephesus. I preach many a sermon on the church at Ephesus in the book of Revelation. It says you are doing all the right things. We're doing all the things right. But the Lord said you're missing one thing and I hold this against you. You have lost your first love. We have got to get back in love with the Lord first. We've got to seek what the Lord will do first. And then we can get our lives to do things that we do. You know, last Sunday, uh, Sunday we said, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is with me. He has done great things. The Lord has done great things. So let's continue to sing the greatness and to get our lives. And then we'll do service for the Lord. An old song says, If you love him, why not serve in other words, we're to do things, to go out, to do missions, to do programs, to do this. And to do it by building up the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit through us. Friends, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. And we all should use these gifts to edify, to build up the kingdom of the Lord. And to try to do what is priest. You know, I think of this when I read the first, 1 Corinthians 13. I call it the great love chapter. But you know, really you need to tie in one verse from the... 12th chapter in order to make this. The church at Corinth had been debating over the use of the spiritual gifts. Some people spoke in the unknown tongue, some did not. And the ones that did thought they were better Christians and they were superior Christians. Look, we got better gifts than you got. Look what we are doing. We are better Christians than you are. And Paul went through that argument and addressed it. He said, but behold, I show you a better way. And the better way is the way of love. So I speak in the tongues of men and angels and have not love. Friends, today, that's where we need to be when we get to to take the love of Jesus in our hearts. So we have to get right with each other. And then the second point comes a carrying love out. Love must be self, see sincere. That's the second thing. Love is not self-serving. You know, in the... 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love does not seek its own. It does not keep books. It is not puffed up. Friends, you know, sometimes we see people that are not sincere. They use people to get things. They see somebody has good influence. They use them. They see they get some money. They use them. But true love comes out of the Lord. And true love does not seek anything but loving unconditionally. You know, we're dominated with society with me and I. I look at all this social media stuff. It comes on these things, and sometimes I just get sick to my stomach by the stuff that this world is doing. The way people are like, and this person's offended with this thing, and this person's offended with that thing, and this person is this, and this person is that. Friends, today, we need to have a sincere love. We know the world don't have it. That's why there's murder. That's why there's looting. Why there's robbery. Why there's sexual immorality. That's why all of these things come up from one end to the other. The things that we keep hearing, the scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal. And it comes because they do not have the love of Christ in their hearts. But there again, we as the church do not have to go that way. Sometimes we say we don't need to be part of the world, but sadly the church is in the world and the church is too much of the world. And friends, today I want to remind you that the words of God never change. Listen to me on this. Jesus Christ is the same Today, yesterday, and tomorrow. But the way that we work together, there is some difference that we can work together. Instead, it's my way or your way. But there is the Lord's way. And we need to come and to work together. I like that statement. It says, not I, but Christ be exalted in everything that we do. You know, I think about the love that Jesus put on, showed on the cross by dying for our sins. And friends, today we can at least to do. In other words, to have a sincere love. You know, sometimes churches and Christians ought to be ashamed the way they act. Friends, today we need to put our love in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And that's it. You know, I know churches, my home church, that they wouldn't even speak to each other. In other words, Paul tells us to walk in love and to love one to another. You know, in John's epistle, it says this, that if a man says he loves God and hates his brother... The truth's not him. He is a liar. 
Friends, we need to examine our lives toward others. And hear me on this one too. You're not going to answer to the pastor. You're not going to answer to a deacon board, as some people call it. I prefer a fellowship of deacons. You're not going to answer to a committee. But one day, you will answer to the Lord himself as you face the judgment seat of Christ. And that is where it's going to count. Now, your salvation may be assured, but you're going to be ashamed when you have to give the way that you've done. Friends, this is the one that we're going to have to be accountable. And everybody, every Christian will be made accountable to Jesus Christ on that day. So friends, that's where we need to answer. And would the Lord be satisfied? You know, there's an old song that come out of my church again. It says, I am satisfied with Jesus. He has done so much for me. He has suffered to redeem me. He has died to set me free. And we sing that chorus. I am satisfied. I am satisfied. I'm satisfied with Jesus. But the question comes to me as I think of Calvary. And listen to this. Is my master satisfied with me? That's the question that you and I, all of us, will be judged for our rewards. Just think about that. Is the Lord satisfied with what we are doing? That's where we need to go. And from that, we need to be real. You know, I like that translation. We love us deeply from the heart, from the depth. In other words, our society takes love and throws it around very, very loosely. For food, even things such as preference, immorality, all sorts of things. But love must become this. We sold out to Jesus and then we'll love one another. The song says loving God and loving each other. We have to do that agape love. And it comes out of love. If we do things out of resentment, we do things out of proving our point, that is not love. Friends, we need to be with each other. Yes, we're not going to always have the same opinions. Yes, there are going to be hurts and there are going to be things. But we need to forgive. Jesus Christ forgave on an old rugged cross. And we need to practice that power. You know, the scripture says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know, friends, we're going to have an exciting time in church, but a lot of it is going to depend on where we continue to love each other and respect each other and say we agree. In a church, in a fruit we studied some Sunday night some years ago, was I am a church member. Thomas Rayner, who was part of the Lifeway, stated this. And one of the tenets he had says, I will not put my preferences over the good of the church. Yeah, you have opinions. I have opinions. Everybody has. Some people have two or three opinions. And you ask them, they'll tell you their opinions too. And that's fine. They're right to their opinions. But what we have to do is to pray for the good of the church and pray to love each other and to seek what the Lord wants us to do. Now, who are we trying to seek here? Not what I want. Not what you want. But who? The Lord. That's what's important. Sometimes I think the Lord gets left out of a lot of stuff. Oh, we'll stick a little prayer on you. Oh, Lord, bless what we're doing. But do we really mean it? Friends, we need to be sold out. We don't need to go in one ear and out the other. In other words, this destroys the church's witness, its ministry. We need to be in that bond of love. You know, my prayer for this church, and I pray it all the time in my prayers, in my prayer life, is Satan, you're not going to have this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave your hands off of this church. And my prayer again says that is Satan, you are not going to have this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave your hands off of it. And I pray that you pray that same thing. The devil doesn't want us to succeed here. I've said this a hundred times to probably get tired of hearing. We have got to realize that Jesus Christ is that and turn our lives over to him. You know the scripture in the first Corinthians 13 says that one day all the things we do in this world will cease. All the tongues will cease, all the prophecies, all the preaching. Everybody will probably say amen to that. There's not going to be any preaching in heaven. Aren't you glad of that? I better not get amens on that. Some of you might do that. There's not going to be a lot of preaching in heaven because we're going to be praising and we're going to be singing all the time. All these things will preach, but the one thing will stay is the love of God will last forever. So the question I leave with you this morning is how deep is your love? How deep is your love for the Lord? That's the first thing. How deep is your love for one another? That's the next thing. Are we just scratching the surface? 
Are we doing the superficial? Are there things that have problems between people? We need to confess them. We need to be sincere in love. In a few minutes, we're going to sing a song, We Are One in the Bond of Love. We've joined our spirit with the Spirit of God. We're one in the bond of love. But you know, we need to look at our lives if we can truly sing that. You know, I think this scripture says this. Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have a sincere love for one another. Love one another deeply from the heart. What does it say? Love one another deeply from the heart. And my prayer at this church, for the minister of this church, is that you will love one another deeply from the heart. And God's people said, Amen. Lord, today, this has been a difficult sermon to preach. It's a spirit sermon that came out of my heart. And you know my heart, Lord. And you my heart for this church. This church has been my life, for Cheryl and I's life, for nearly over 26 years. And when it hurts, I mourn for it. When it rejoices, I rejoice in it. But Lord, today, I just lift up that we practice this love. We've got some important issues coming up in our church. And these issues can be divisive. But on the other hand, these issues can be uniting as we seek to go together to seek your will in whatever we do and whatever we say. Now, Lord, I'm going to turn this invitation period over to you. I'm just going to let you work through the power of your Holy Spirit. We said in that song, said, let the Holy Spirit come and take control. And my power is, Lord, that through the presence of your wonderful Holy Spirit, that you will come and take control of this invitation period and that you will speak to hearts and you will touch lives. We ask now that you use us. That you do it and we give this over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The hymn is we are one in the bond of love. We've joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're not, you're not feeling that bond this morning. You're away, you're estranged. But you can see Jesus Christ. We are one in the bond of love. If you're a member of another church, you can come join us in this. But if this message speaks to you, this doors are open for rededication to come in any way you would. Our invitation hymn is number 384, The Bond of Love. Let's stand, please.
you to do one thing. I know our time is limited, but I just want to say, just bow your heads just for a few minutes. And Kathy, would you just play that song over? Friends, we do need to practice the bond of love in this church. The Lord has just asked you. I know there are needs in this church. If you'd like for me to pray for you, please lift your hand up. I'll pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's promise to try to work and seek the Lord's will here in this church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this church. We're thankful for the ministry of this church for over 105 years. As the first pastor of this church said, the prospects are bright. But Lord, we just ask as we go on that we continue to seek to love, to cooperate, and to do with one another. We ask this now in Jesus' name. As we go our ways, and we ask now, and all God's people said, Amen.